Hi everyone, Kim here. Um, okay, today we're going to talk about the polygamist groups of the Mormon Church. Um, and I say that because they're not LDS, they're fundamental fundamentalists, but they're not FLDS. Um, so, some of this we've already covered, but I just want to make sure we're on the same page. And I'm going over this so that we can slide into the AUB, which will probably be the next one we get more on Rulon Allred, who is the first president of the AUB, which stands for Apostolic United Brethren. Um, the Mormon polygamists broke away from the LDS Church after John Taylor died. He, John Taylor was the third president of the LDS Church. Um, and after John Taylor died, Wilford Woodruff became the fourth president of the LDS Church. Um, I'm going to go through some other things before we talk about what Wilford Woodruff did. Um, there were a few failed attempts attempts on the part of the U.S. government to persuade the Mormons to give up their polygamous practices. Um, because they were unsuccessful, they finally passed the Edmonds Act in 1882. And what the act did was make polygamous practices a felonious um, crime. And it also told the Mormons that should they continue with polygamy, they would forfeit everything they owned. That includes the right to vote, hold public offices, houses, land. Um, even the Mormon church would lose its land and church. Um, they would also not be able to hold public office, which is what caused Joseph F. Smith to do the second manifesto. But after um, the Edmonds Act became, was act, enacted, um, there were several Mormon men who were arrested, including Lorenzo Snow, George C. Cannon, and John Taylor, all of whom would eventually become president of the LDS Church. Um, and in 1890, Mormon President Wilford Woodruff, who, as I said, was the fourth president of the church, um, passed the first manifesto. Um, and in the first manifesto, it said that polygamy was no longer going to be practiced. Um, and a lot of the saints of that day would like to flaunt before the public, um, the manifesto and discounting that the LDS church had anything to do with polygamous marriages. Um, and they said, we have this manifesto, and it says, we no longer have anything to do with polygamy. And such flaunting, so patently deceitful, the Woodruff's first manifesto did not do anything to stop polygamy. In fact, one of the people who should have been arrested under the Edmonds Act was Wilford Woodruff himself, who had six wives. Um, in fact, in 1897, 1897, seven years after he passed the manifesto, he took his sixth wife. Um, and that's according to B. Car Carmen Har bah, Hardy. Sorry. <laughs> um, and even after he passed that manifesto, there were 262 plural marriages that took Place involving 220 different men. So that's why I said, you know, even after the first manifesto was passed, it was all a wink, wink, nod, nod. Yeah, no more plural marriage. 
Um, and plural marriage did not cease after the manifesto, as we just said. Um, so they didn't listen to their president. Um, and it's not hard to evidence that polygamy is alive and well in Utah. And not just the LDS church. Um, we're going to talk about when the different groups broke away from the LDS church. Um, and I know that the Utah Mormon church, Utah LDS church would like to deny that any of the polygamous activity is not being engaged in by any of its members. Um, you know, a lot of these groups, they're polygamous groups. Their members were instructed to, how do I put it, to just take part in the LDS church. They didn't belong to the church really because they were polygamous. They had been baptized into their polygamous groups. Um, but they would do all the activities and, and relief society and all that with the regular of the yes church um you know and the LDS church just like to point out that the ones who practice polygamy in this day and age are of the fun fundamentalist LDS groups um and they consider everybody who practices polygamy to be fundamental not just the FLDS church which is the Warren Jeffs group um and, you know, this is just, it's irrelevant on at least two grounds. First of all, the whole polygamy doctrine started with Joseph Smith and the fundamentalist Mormons are simply following his conventional mandate that even the Utah church never excised from its sacred scripture. They just don't practice it. Anymore, my understanding is that the modern day LDS church they practice in polygamy for the afterlife, so they don't have like six wives today, but they will be sealed to multiple people so that in the celestial kingdom they'll have multiple wives. Um, and that's kind of, you know, and fundamentalist Mormons believe Joseph Smith's words have more precedent than any human being words, including those of the U.S. government. Um, they look, therefore, upon the Utah LDS Church as being in rebellion against Joseph Smith as well as God. Secondly, and more importantly, um, even though the Utah LDS Church, starting with Wilford Woodruff, did not agree that polygamy should cease, that's why the first manifesto there is a wink, wink, not nod. Um, um, that's why we had Mormon men continuing to take additional wives, um, even after the manifesto. And it, it went so far as polygamous men of the time moved to Canada and Mexico to escape U.S. prosecution. Um... You know, in Mexico, we had the Liberian group, which we talked about. And in 1904, Joseph F. Smith felt the need to do a second manifesto. Um, to end polygamy. It was, they knew it didn't end with the first manifesto. Um, you 
you know, even Lorenzo Snow, who was already a polygamist in the LDS church, he continued to um, he continued to approve the performance of polygamous unions. Um, so anytime you hear anybody, whether it's an interview on TV, radio, or a member of the Mormon church, and polygamy comes up, and how they say, well, it, it stopped. Even if it did exist, it stopped at, at the first manifesto, and it didn't. That's why there was a need for a second manifesto. Um, and as far as these fundamentalist churches believe, um, the presidents of the church are not the same for 17 that the LDS church sees. You know, these fundamentalist groups, they believe that Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, and John Taylor were the first two or first three presidents of the church. Um, then after that, as far as these fundamentalist groups are concerned, you had John Woolley and then his son, Lauren Woolley, Leslie Broadbent, John Y. Barlow, and Joseph Musser, um, who most people had never heard of. Um, and after Joseph Musser, he allowed the FLDS and the AUB to break away. The LeBaron group had already broken away and moved to Mexico in 1886 and had nothing to do with the Mormon church anymore. Um, so with the AUB, we had Rulon C. Allred as the first president, Owen Allred, Lemoyne Jensen and Lynn Thompson have been their presidents, and they've had a lot fewer presidents. Now, Rulon C. Allred was murdered in the 1970s by one of the sons of um, the first president of the AUB church. So, um, that's where, where that gets us. Um, and just some of the nuances of the AUB church, um, which they believe there's no sacrament unless you're baptized, meaning you can't, not everybody gets to partake of the sacrament. You have to have been baptized into the A AUB order in order to take the sacrament. They also believe that you should always kneel when praying facing the Salt Lake Temple. Um, so it kind of, you know, kind of like the, the Islamic, people of the Islamic faith, they believe they have to face towards Mecca when they pray. The AUB faces towards the Salt Lake Temple. And... They have a strong emphasis on food storage because they believe that the second, excuse me, that the second coming is near. They also believe that when talks are given in church, it's not to be memorized. It's to be led by the Holy Spirit. So you can't make a you can't decide what you're going to say and write it out and memorize it. You say what the Holy Spirit tells you to say. Um, so, and as I mentioned, um, Rulon C. Allred was the first president of the AUB. He was born in 1906 in Mexico, two polygamous parents. Um, and then he eventually came back to the U.S. He met his first wife, who her name was Catherine, and she did not believe in polygamy. Even though Rulon kept mentioning it, she was completely against it. And her and Rulon had three children. Um, 
finally, one day he's like, you know what? We're, we're going to live, live the scripture. We're going to believe or live God's word. And I'm going to have multiple wives. And at that point, she left him, took the children, and Rulan had to find his wives again. Um, and we will we'll start with Rulan and talk more about him um, and his leading the AUB church on the next time I talk about AUB. Now, tomorrow, which is Wednesday, the 4th of October. I'm going to do a haul video. I have some things I'm going to help my parents with tomorrow. So just doing a haul video, it's easier to fit into whatever schedule I can work out for it when I get home. Um, but if you have any questions about that, you know, Wilfred Woodruff and his plural wives, the first manifesto, um, the beliefs of the presidents that the fundamentalist Mormons have or had, um, write in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. Um, but again, this is just the first of my videos on the AUB. Um, there was a lot to really research on this and begin to, and I'm excited. And it seems like the AUB is probably the least controversial of the polygamous groups. Um, and it does still exist. Um, so we'll talk to you later. Bye.